Okay. All right. Facebook people, welcome back. This is part one segment of punches. So we have single punches, cross punches, hook punches. So employing the quantum Kyushu principles into um, what we teach here at American Kempo. You can apply it into anything. One thing that separates what we do from a lot of other systems, <clears throat> besides the name of American Kempo, or modern Kempo, as Mr. Parker used to like to call it. Uh, this is from Mr. Trail, who was my instructor, and indicated to me on many occasions, rest in peace, was that with self-defense system, what we do is we can prefix, we can suffix, we can insert, we can blend, we can rearrange, we can alter, we can adjust, we can regulate, we can add, and we can delete. So those are the ten things we can do with self-defenses. Yeah, there may be a few more out there, but those are the ten that we use primarily when um, breaking down or dissecting self-defense applications um, in what we teach here. So, in applying the content Kyushu principles, we're just going to be showing you how you can, when you strike the move, what you're actually doing, where you can strike to alter the move to make it most effective. Remember, you have ineffective, effective, most effective. Nine times out of ten, I want to be most effective most of the time. And basically what I want to be doing, I want to be hitting them on the points as many times as I can, as quickly as I can, until something connects. So you're following a sequence we talked about. And we talked about that in the previous uh, two segments that I did. Again, this is going to be part one. So with the help of uh, Mr. Desmond Shad, appreciate that, sir. Um, what we're going to be doing is, anytime you strike anything in the arm, it sets up everything for the head, the neck, and the body. Okay, not too many often somebody's going to attack you with their chest or the, even their legs. You know, occasionally you might see somebody just grabbed a knee or something, but we're talking about punching here specifically. So, I'm just pulling up his arm here. <clears throat> so, between the cubicle fossa, the hollow of the elbow, and the wrist, there's a point right here, one half inch down from the radial bone. This is your ulnar bone, this is your radial bone. Larger of the two bones. On Vulcans and Romulans, it's the opposite. But we're going to talk of just about the humans today. You are human. Okay. Sorry. So, right in the middle, between that one half inch in here, is a point. This is the metal point called lung six. This one is hit this direction. The energy moves this way in the body, comes across over the top of the metacarpal, two bones supports back of the hand, goes back up the radial bone. That's how it works in everybody. Energy moves through your body 24 7, 52. So, in hitting this, if I hit this this way, it weakens the fist. If I hit it straight down this way, he feels that, it numbs the arm a bit, but if I hit it that direction there, you can see how it weakens the fist. And that's with my hand closed. If I take this with my hand open, two-way action this way, there. You can see what that does. That's the reaction that happens most of the time. So that one there, what it does is it backs up the energy and forces the hand to open. So that's a point that controls that. I get it, but it's second, setting this up here secondarily. Because when I'm striking that on the radial bone, it sends a signal to the phrenic nerve. Phrenic nerve is what connects to the diaphragm through the uh, upper cervical, and that one gets the diaphragm spazzing. When it spazzes, it affects the abdominal organs and, and your, uh, changes the, uh, the uh, cardiovascular. So that's based on the autonomic nervous system. You have the sympathetic that regulates heart and lungs, and then you have the parasympathetic that regulates more digestion, uh, uh, defecation, and urination. Okay. So in layman terms, when I hit this, it's going to cause this to speed up, this to slow down. It's the uh, not the it's the uh, on the parasympathetic that, that causes the vasal faint or weakness thereof for the person to black out, pass out, or or lose consciousness, or or lose their balance and fall to the ground. Okay, they don't always lose consciousness. So from a straight punch here, if you want to use. Uh, from American Kemble, Delayed Sword. So Delayed Sword was originally taught for a punch, and then they went to a grabbing action, but we still use it here for a punch. I mean, you know, we do talk about the grab too, but we're going to use this one specifically because it can be used for either or, so in this case for the punch. So if the punch comes in, so when I strike that, you see how the body dips that way? That's the two-way action I talk about every time. Cause the has the spasm. Now, in saying that, conception, energy moves this way up the body. But when I lift my leg up, it changes the polarity in me. So when I hit this up, it changes the polarity in me, because usually if I hit down, that's only for upper extremity. If I use the leg, it's got to be hit this way here. That sends 
energy that way. So now I have energy backing up this way, energy dropping this way, and going this way. The last movement is going to be hit on the crease of our stomach 9 and 10. Okay, right at the base of the level to the Adam's apple. And that one's hit in and up towards the center of the head. If I hit it straight in, he doesn't feel it. But if I, I'm just going to do it lightly, not touching him, hitting it, nothing up my sleeve, hitting it two-way action that way, oh, you can see the difference there. So that's the one that can cause the basal pain if you put strike that in there. So, again, striking this way here, this is the one. Close hand is an embryonic stage when you're a novice. But if you see more experienced practitioners and more the sophisticated level of training, they're going to have more open hand movements. If you see in a lot of the advanced katas or former pumises, whatever you want to call them, whatever system or style you train in, lower uh, cue belts are taught with closed fists, upper cue belts or into the dan belts are taught more with open hand or combination open and closed, okay? So you can, you can uh, you know, research that yourself to see. So again, this way here, striking this way here, weakens the fist, dips the body. The kick can either go to the lower level below the umbilicus, the belly button, conception three, four, and five, which regulate your, your bladder, your small intestine, your triple warmer, which is your san jiao, which regulates all the hormones. Or you can hit into spleen 11. Spleen 11 is on the opposite side, a third down from the inguinal crease, two thirds up from the knee. If I hit that one there, you can see how the body dips, it really opens that up nicely for me. So that's an area I like to go around and hit them on. Yes, you can hit them to the groin, but a lot of people can take kicks to the groin unless you come up underneath. And on the street, you may not be thinking that way as clearly. So again, uh, three areas I like to hit is either um, lower abdominal or below the belly button or inside the thigh. <clears throat> I get the best result if you're looking from a quantum pugil uh, physics principle of utilizing the meridians and the pathways and the acupuncture points that regulate and control the flow of chi flow, vital force, whatever you want to cut through the body. So again from here, boom, that's the motion. Now, saying that, say he does a left punch. Oh, well, it's the opposite. He does a left punch, you just say, wait, I'm only trained to do the right punch. It's just a joke. So he does a left punch, it's the same thing, but instead of using this motion here, striking here, I'm now using this motion, what we call an extended outward uh, striking block, because friends don't let friends block. There's really no such thing as blocks, they're striking blocks. I'm never just going to block. When I'm hitting, I'm going to be striking them at the same time, checking or, or combination thereof. So if he hits that way, that's the motion there. See how it weakens that hand? Again, the kick can go to the other leg, inside the... Uh, uh, the thigh, the opposite leg, or the lower uh, abdominal region again, and this time it's open on this side. So now I can use inverted, inverted hand sword, sword or shuto, the same motion. I want to hit it in and up that way. You can see how that can cause some effect. But the arms are the things that set up everything in the head, neck, and the body. Same with the legs. They'll set up everything else. Okay, they're setup points is what they really are because they connect. Okay, so again, if I'm using this way here, one, two, three. So you can use it that way from a right punch or a left punch combination. Just using a basic a sword of destruction from Kempo or a delayed sword, or you can just call it a right punch. You don't even have to use the kick. It depends on if you, how you gauge uh, your distances, gauge in your opponent, following line of action, path of action. So in close quarters combat, if you shoot the punch, boom, I just got to do this, and didn't do that. Left punch comes in, boom, same thing, okay? Um, but if I want to gauge my distance, I might want to use my longer weapon to use borrowed force. Borrowed force, I'm using his force, Boro, to uh, accelerate my movement or my final um, uh, target I want to try and attack. Um, now, if we're using a combination of a right-left or a left-right, we'll do a right-left first. So the right one, I'm hitting this one to weaken that one, but now the left one comes in. So I want to move gauge this way here and do the same thing here. Keeping my, if I'm striking low, I check high. If I'm striking high, I check low. Okay, that's the other hand. I want to use both in combination. From this position here, then I can strike that way there. If it's a left, right, one, two, same thing. Now I just struck there. If I'm using the legs, if I'm stepping back to gauge my distance, again, right, left, one, two, kick. Then I can go that way. If it's the other way, one, two, then I can use it that way as well. Okay? So again, the target zones are basically the same. It's just that now you're using what? If you're using star block set, you know star block set. This is a portion of star block set. So I'm using the inside to outside, or I'm using outside to inside sector. You can add insert move. So 
if I was re this is rearranging the move from here to here, all right, or from here to here, with or without the kick, I can take out a move that's deleting a move, or I can add a move, or I can add an insert. So on this side here, if I was going to add an insert from close quarters combat, here comes the right. Now, as the left comes in, it's like, um, uh, what's that technique at third round? Fatal deviation, sir. That, geez, that's why I have them here. Fatal deviation. So one, two, three. So all I'm adding is the insert. We talked about this before. The xiphoid process, you have conception 14. Hitting it straight in affects heart meridian. Hitting it in and down affects large intestine, spleen, pancreas, gallbladder, um, all small intestine, etc. So you've got a whole array of things from the meridian standpoint that's being affected. So if it comes in one, one, two, two. Now when I hit that, it set up everything on conception, everything on the inside of the arm so you understand how this works. It's a little bit more in depth, so I'm just keeping it plain. Now from there, whoop, I can just contour that and hit them on stomach 9 and 10. If the body's turned more this way, whoop, I hit them on gallbladder 20, in and up. So that's going to affect the meridian the same way and cause a vasofaint or cause them to pass out, okay, or knock to the ground, okay? So I'm adding the insert. By adding this one, it just... It's like adding gasoline to an already existing fire. You're going to get that much bang for your buck. Okay? If you're going from a hooking punch, like a five sword, a lot of people like to rumble on five swords. Remember somebody told me years ago, I said, well, you could never pull that off on the street. I'm going, really? Absolutely, you could. <clears throat> the self-defense techniques are only, a, only um, to, uh, as a uh, guide. It's not carved in stone. You have to use that. You're just grabbing from that, like the alphabet of motion and formulating what works for you in a situation at the, at the time it happens. Okay, so if it's, a, if it's a hooking punch, rather than a straight linear punch or cross punch, now it's hooking punch. Different ways you can deal with that. But if it's hooking, some people like I see step in and do both hands. That's perfectly fine. A much larger opponent gets a smaller person. If you're using both hands, or if you're using just one hand, again, you're going to be hitting it that way. And if you hit it that way, yet this is what you have to be worried about, not this. It's this one here. So if I just hit it this way, I'm just opening myself up. And I see a lot of people do that. So from here, when I do that, it dips that, causes that to happen. And both hands spazzing for the moment. Now, I'm not going to stand there and just do that. I want to do what we call a ricochet move. So ricochet, I'm already there at small intestine 17 on the under ridge, or I'm at stomach 9 and 10. That could end the fight right there. Let's say he's stunned. Now from there, I could just use the, the, the uh, palm heel. I see a lot of people doing palm heel to the center line. Bad idea. Unless you're larger than them, you can fracture their jaw. All this is going to do is piss them off. It's not doing anything. It's called like the neutral zone if you watch Star Trek. So this is called the neutral zone. I can hit him all day till the cows come home. If he's if much larger like some of the other opponents I had, they could probably fracture his jaw. But the average person is not going to be able to do that. You say you can fracture a jaw, tell me how many jaws you've fractured lately and I'll come to your class. So, again, from here, one, two. Now from here, best to hit them on this side using this one. you got the energy change. I'm not going to go through positive and negative. But if I just hit it in, he feels that. But if I hit it in, I'm up. Oh, there's a feel the difference, eh? Sure. So I'm going one, two, three. Now from here, we talked about stomach uh, fifth, or spleen 15. Spleen 15 hits in and up. So this one here complements this angle one right here. This is the yin, that's the yang. You don't need to know that. All you need to know, if I hit them there, I want to hit the opposite quadrant here. I'm going to get the best bang for my buck. So I'm already here. So when I hit this one in and down, watch his reaction. I go from here. See how he bends over? Now that just opens me up using an opposing force and forming a bracing angle to catch him in the stomach 9 and 10 on that side. Doesn't end there, certainly going to end here. And then here's your angle of incidence coming down perpendicular on that either bladder 10, the base, or on uh, gallbladder 20. In Gallbladder 20 has to be hit in and down on that motion because he's bent over. He's standing up, gallbladder is hit in and up. But he's over here, it changes the polarity. This is where your polarity will change. Then I want to hit him in, I'm just going to tap him in and down that way. Oh, you can feel that right away. Yes, sir. I'm just touching them, but just so you can feel that, okay? Put it all together. So again, from this position, here, there, there. If you put it all together from here, so that's the motion. Again, you gotta put some tempo in it too, because if you just go like that, it cancels each other out. So you gotta make sure that you're basing from here to here, here, 
See that? Here. See that? Then you can use the other one. If you want to add the part of the extension in. When you're adding the extension in, though, you want to make sure you come this way. That's the two motions. See that? And then drag that. Pulling everything with you. Um, again, that's from a hooking. Two-handed ones can hit the bicep. Pericardium two numbs the bicep. That way there. Oh, he feels that right away. Just lightly. So I'm not going to really do it again. You're hitting them both. I see people do this perfectly fine. Especially if they're much bigger and you're smaller. Hitting them with both. Same thing. So look at the tremendous amount of torque. Counter torque. Sally Benson. Look at the line opening here. This end's going to come back to oppose the force. Okay, so we just talked about just the arm points. This one, weaken the fist, angle and direction, back it up. Don't hit it in, got to hit it that way. Two-way action is your key. Follow that, contour, stomach nine and ten. Palm heel, stomach five. Hit it in, up and in, down, opposites attract. Okay, positive energy, negative energy, left hand. Now from here, as I rotate this way here, spleen 15. Three to five finger breaths on the umbilicus, on that horizontal border, right there. Hit it in and up. See what it does? Now it opens up this. Slide up to a forward bow, shift the hip, posing force. Stomach nine and ten that way, that doesn't finish him. Drop that down, angle of incidence. Perpendicular down on gallbladder 20, which is wood. So you have metal, my fire, metal. Fire melts metal. Got the wood. Wood penetrates the earth. Just doing that, you have spleen 15, which is a yin of earth. You have stomach 5, which is a yang of earth. They're an opposite, cross extensor reflex action. So that's just a base one from the hooking punch, just a single hook punch that we talked about, utilizing two way action. Okay, so you have the right punch, you have the left, you have the right left, you have the left right. You have with or without adding an insert. You can delete a move, taking out the kick, or you can add a move. Okay? That's basically it from part one of punches. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you, sir. Sure. And uh, I'm going to probably do a part two, part three of punches. This is a really cool subject I'd really like to explore more from. So thank you very much. Hope you have a great night. We'll see you soon. Cheerio.